Are you struggling to get your first cloud architect job or your first solution architect job? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization that's dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology for over 25 years and I've been coaching others to get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for two decades now and it's my favorite thing in the world. Today we're going to talk about why it's hard for many people to get their first cloud architect job and I'm going to tell you what to do so it won't be hard for you to get yours because it's not hard to get a cloud architect job. It's only hard when you have the wrong skills. So here's the key. People ask me every day when they come to me, Mike, I can't seem to get hired. Why is it so hard? And I say, it's not. Our students get hired every day. The students in our Cloud Architect Career Development Program get hired constantly. Now, when I tell the students the problem is a skills mismatch, first they say, but I'm certified. And I say, that's the problem. And let's talk about what that is. There's a mismatch between what we architects actually do and what people think that we actually do. And in some cases, this mismatch is so extreme. Extreme. When people come to me and they want to be architects, they're like, Mike, I don't understand. I've studied Python. I've learned to code. I've learned sysops and devops, but I can't get hired. And I say, I'm sorry to say this. None of those are actually cloud architect skills. They're all other people's jobs. Want to be a cloud architect, train to be like a cloud architect and get hired. So what we're going to do first it was we're going to define what is a cloud architect. Now, I've been an architect for two and a half decades. I know exactly what architects do. And I speak to my architect buddies every single day. And most of them say, Mike, I can't believe how non-technical of a job this is. But we're still technical, so we're going to talk about what this is. Instead of me telling you what an architect is and what an architect does, I'm going to read to you from CIO Magazine what is a cloud architect. And the reason I'm going to do this is as follows. I've been an architect forever. All my architect graduates and all the other architects I've worked with, we all do the same job. But there's been this myth about the cloud architect and people are studying all the wrong things. So I want you to hear from somebody other than me. So Gartner is an organization that really evaluates industry trends. In fact, you want to know the best cloud? Go to Gartner. Want to know the best software to find networking? Go look in Gartner. Want to know who has the best virtualization? Go to Gartner. Want to see a trend about security? Go to Gartner. They are the experts at tech industry trends. So Gartner started looking at these goofy job descriptions. They started looking at some of these weird cloud architect things and they said, this doesn't make sense. This is not architecture. So Gartner went and asked chief information officers of, organ of organizations all over. And if for those of you that are new to tech, I want you to get hired so badly, I'm going to define the organizational structure. You've got the chief and in in executive officer that's responsible for the organization strategy, the global picture of the whole company. And then directly beneath the CEO, you've got the CIO. And the CIO executes the CEO's mission through information technology, like cloud stuff, like network stuff, like data center stuff. So. If you want to know the skills you need, ask the person who hires us. And who hires us is the chief information officer. So this is a published article in CIO Magazine. My team will leave the link in the description below. So what does a cloud architect do? According to CIO Magazine, according to Gartner, according to CIOs, we lead the cultural change for cloud adoption. We develop and coordinate a cloud architecture and we develop a cloud strategy and coordinate the adoption process. So I'm going to say that again. We lead the cultural change for cloud adoption. We develop and coordinate a cloud architecture and we develop a cloud strategy and coordinate the adoption process. Now, I got to tell you, that's what I've done for 25 years. That's all I've done for 25 years. And when they talk about daily responsibilities, I'll read them to you too. Finding talent with the necessary skills, assessing application software and hardware, creating a cloud broker team, establishing best practices for the cloud across the company, selecting cloud providers and vetting third-party services, overseeing governance and mitigating risk, managing budgets and estimating cost, working closely with IT security to monitor privacy and develop incident response procedures and operate at scale. So before I actually talk about how do you get these skills, I want to make it really clear. This is 50% tech and 50% or more leadership, so potentially even less than 50% tech. The architect role is not an engineer. We didn't, did you notice he didn't hear any coding here? 
You didn't hear any Python here. You didn't hear any DevOps here. You didn't hear any sysops or maintenance here. It is design and leadership. So I'm gonna break it down. I wanna count it for you, whether it's, whether it's tech or leadership, just so you get the feel. 90% of the problems people have is they learned all the wrong skills. So let's get these skills right. On my right hand, we're gonna count tech. On my left hand, we're gonna count leadership. So leading the cultural change for cloud adoption. This is leadership all the way. Developing and coordinating the cloud architecture, that is tech. Developing a strategy and coordinating the adoption process, we'll call it tech, but I'd call it leadership, but I'll call it tech anyway. Finding talent with the necessary skills, that is a leadership skill. Assessing application software and hardware, we'll call it tech. Creating a cloud broker team is leadership. Establishing best practices is leadership. Selecting cloud providers and vetting third-party services, we'll call that tech. Overseeing governance and mitigating risk. Now we've got five leadership and four tech. Working closely with IT security to monitor through privacy and develop for speech procedures, uh, we'll call it tech, just to give it one. Manage budgets and estimate costs, we'll call it leadership. And operating a scale, we'll call it leadership. So seven of five leadership versus tech. So you've got to have these leadership skills. So now, you know what a cloud architect is. You know we're not scripting. You know we're not coding. You know we're not configuring. So now, what do you learn? First, learn system design, specifically the network and the data center. Now you may say, hey Mike, we're going to the cloud to get off of the network in the data center. And I'm gonna say, learn the network in the data center and anyway, and here's why. All we do as cloud architects is one of two things. Mostly we take systems out of the network in the data center and we move them to the cloud. We can't take systems that we in from the network in the data center and move them if we don't know what they are. And the rest of the things that we do is we're actually designing something. And even if we're not designing something that's gonna go straight on the cloud, what is the cloud? Seriously, what is it? It's a network and a data center that's been virtualized. It's just somebody else's data center. So it's the same tech. So in the solution architect certifications, they teach you how to configure things. But in data center design, they teach you how to design it. So if you know the network and the node of the data center, you'll know how to design the solutions on and off the cloud and also migrate them to the cloud. And when it comes down to the experience section, people are always looking for that network and data center experience. So get some, even if it's in a test lab. This means, here's what I want you to learn. Routing protocols, specifically BGP, eBGP and IBGP, and you should know OSPF along the way. You also need to know NAT. One-to-one -one NAT, one-to-many NAT, static NAT, NAT overload, all the use cases for NAT. You should know switching. That includes VLANs, that includes spanning tree, that includes rapid spanning tree, that includes VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking protocols. You should understand things like Ethernet over MPLS. You should understand VPN connections, IPsec technologies. You should understand um, SSL VPNs. You should also understand um, all the types of private lines and when to use them and how to use them and why to use them. You should understand IP addressing. You should understand server virtualization and containers and firewalls and IDS IPS systems and VPN concentration and have good knowledge in block storage, object storage, file storage and be familiar with the storage protocols such as server message block and NFS. You should have good knowledge of the types of databases and when to use each. What are those other non-technical skills that are half of our cloud architect job? Presentation skills, we're gonna be presenting constantly. We're gonna be selling constantly. We cloud architects, we design a solution and then sell it to the customer and then I turn it over to a team of cloud engineers to build. Leadership skills, as cloud architects, we are gonna be doing system design. In order to design a system, we may have to baseline the organization's systems. You may have to bring 50 cloud engineers with you to do the project and you may have to lead them and they don't work for you. So you're gonna to have to have great leadership abilities. Now, system design, this part is critical. The business acumen, here's the thing. Companies don't buy technology because they like technology. Organizations buy technology to solve business problems. As the architect, here's what we do. We interact with the, tech, the organization's leadership to figure out what their business problems are so they can figure out what kind of technology solution to design to help them. If we don't have the business skills, there's no way that we can actually help our customer. So we must have good business acumen. We must be CXO relevant, knowing what to say to the CEO versus the CIO versus the CTO versus the CFO, et cetera, et cetera. We must be able to take their business problems and know how to solve them. We must understand revenue. We must understand how to read a financial statement. We must understand capital costs and the way to distribute them and ROI modeling, et cetera, et cetera. 
I've got to be highly emotionally intelligent and have great customer service skills. These are the skills to become a cloud architect. So if you're having a hard time getting a cloud architect job, don't worry, we could help you or focus on these skills. Focus on your design skills, focus on your presentation skills, focus on your leadership skills, focus on your sales skills, focus on your business acumen, your emotional intelligence, and of course, practice that interview because if you don't have the perfect interview, it's gonna be a lot harder to get hired. So go out there and get your first cloud architect job. My students do it constantly. They're always out there. They're always telling me how happy they are in the new cloud architect jobs, and it is a wonderful job. I've enjoyed being a cloud architect, a solution architect, an enterprise architect, a network architect for two and a half decades, and I want you to do the same. So this is Michael Gibbs. I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects, and I'm here to help you with your cloud computing career. Take care. Have a wonderful day. I will see you in another video very soon. It was so nice having you join us for this video today. Let me tell you about some free services we do for the cloud community. Once per week, we actually have a free question and answer session on live on YouTube, where you can come and ask us any questions you want about building your career related to cloud computing or networking, and we'll answer them in real time for you because we want to get you to your goals. Several more times per week, we have guests from industry, industry experts that I've known for decades that are movers and shakers that have changed the world that can give you information so you can build the best career. I invite them periodically. They are on my show. If there's a chance to do some free training on our channel, we'll do it live because we want you to all to have the best skills for the best career. So please subscribe and hit the bell. I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to assisting you in your technology career. Thank you so much. This is Michael Gibbs from Go Cloud Architect.